Hi everyone. As most of you might know, I play hardcore almost exclusively in Diablo 4. I have leveled one rogue to 100 already, and I'm on my way with my second rogue with a different build that is 86 by now. So I'm intending to reach 100 with that as well. And I also want to try to kill Uber Lilith and push tier 100, etc. So far, I have not lost a single character besides the halt incident. And I've also never procced the elixir of death evasion. So when I used it, which was not really often, to be fair. So I think I can give some tips on how to survive with pretty much any character, any build, and give some yeah, general advice on how to build your character so that you have an easy time getting through the game. Because there are some things you can do majorly wrong and right. So I'm going to talk you through how I build my character here to be extremely tanky, to survive molten explosions, even multiple of them if I have to, to survive plague explosions, to just stand in the middle of a pack and basically not worry about anything. So number one is you need to have enough damage reduction. First of all, a lot of people that always think me they are build planners and all that, they completely neglected damage reduction on, for example, helm or chest, because these can be not just defensive slots, but also utility slots. And a lot of people tend to put whatever they can on it, but no defense. So number one, run defensive aspects that actually do something for your build. So you see here, I have a defensive, I have another defensive, and uh, the pants are only defensive. You are forced to have defenses here. And optionally, you can even have a fourth one on your amulet, but this is usually not really needed. One defensive aspect in particular that works for all classes and for many builds, or at least can be tried to be included in many builds, is Disobedience. Disobedience is by far the most powerful defensive aspect in the game. It gives you up to 50% extra armor. And the way that armor works is that, it, first of all, it reduces your physical damage taken, which is usually most of the damage you take. And it also applies this damage reduction value for half of the damage taken from all other elements. So armor in general is a very powerful stat and you want to have it pretty high in general. You see here right now I have 45% damage reduction when uh, I have no disobedience stacks with my gear right now against enemies of the same level. You get a penalty for fighting high level monsters, you get a bonus for fighting low level monsters, which you usually don't do. So this armor reduction actually is not accurate if you're, for example, farming nightmare dungeons and monsters are above you. The exact calculation is currently unknown as far as I know, but it means that you generally take more damage than what it says here. But the thing is that if you have disobedience stack, you can see my armor going up. And you see here the damage reduction goes to 82% against monsters of my level. So I go from 45% damage uh, reduction to 82% damage reduction. Or in damage taken values, I go from 45% damage taken to 18% damage taken, which means I only take 40%, less than half of the damage previously for physical damage. And again, half of this damage reduction applies to elements. So this makes armor generally extremely powerful, especially if you have a way to stack disobedience. Now, this is generally only doable for builds that hit very, very quickly, a lot of targets, or have dots in their build, but Basically, any respectable Sorg build will probably have some source of burn. Basically, any respectable Rogue build will have some source of poison. And any Bar build has some kind of bleed. The Druids have some poison stuff. And the Necros generally want to play around Shadow Blight or something like that. So basically, every single class with most of their best builds actually do have some form of dots in their build to stack Disobedience very easily. That being said, I would absolutely not be surprised to see Disobedience nerfed very soon and maybe cap at half the amount of stacks. So instead of 100 stacks, make it 50 or something like that. So that's just not so obscene on the higher end, but a bit more consistent. But for now, this is the number one aspect to use. The thing about armor and resistances is that resistances are nearly entirely useless in Diablo 4. So this is not like Diablo 2, where you stack the resistances additively up to 75% damage reduction. And then this is kind of like the must have for hell difficulty in Diablo 4. They multiply, they don't add together. So basically the way that resistances work in Diablo 4 is that you have 20% uh, resistances, which gives you 80% uh, damage taken, so 0 0.8. And then you have another 20% resistances. They don't add up to 40% resistances, but instead they multiply. So 0 0.8 times 0 0.8. So you have 36% resistances. And if you add another 20%, it's not 60, it's going to be like 49%. So they multiply so that the remaining incoming damage gets reduced by that amount, by 20%. But a bigger issue with resistances on top of that is that there is a penalty applied to them. So when you go to the World Tier statue in Kyovashat, 
you can see that actually the difficulty overview tells you that in tournament difficulty you get a 40 percent resistance penalty so all of those values that you have in your items actually get reduced by 40 percent before they start adding any kind of damage reduction so for example a 20 percent resistance roll on your items gets reduced by 40 percent so it adds actually only 12 percent damage reduction but then only half the incoming non-physical damage is reduced by this resistance value because the other half is reduced by your armor so let's say you take 1000 damage and have 80 percent damage reduction from armor then 500 of that damage will be reduced by 80 percent so I take 100 damage from the armor part, and then there's the other part, the other 500, that gets reduced by, let's say, 20% for my fire res, and so I take 400 damage. So it combines 100 damage taken from the armor side and 400 damage taken from the fire side, and the overall damage reduction is 50%. But because of this resistance penalty that you get in tournament difficulty, resistances are simply not very easy to stack and effectively useless. Like, you don't want to have resistance on your items, really. You do get them by default on some of your pieces, like the amulet and the rings. So you kind of are forced to have a bit of resistances. But generally, in terms of the value that they provide to your character's defenses is extremely low. You may find a chess piece, for example, that has like three different resistances with like 50% or something like that. And you think, wow, this is a lot of damage reduction. But again, you get a 40% penalty. So that 50% is actually 30%. And then you get half of that. So it's 15% damage reduction. And then that resistance only applies to a single element. And look at those other stats you can have on a chest. You can have 18% damage reduction from close enemies up to 24% almost. And that applies to all elemental types. This applies to physical, to fire, cold, whatever. And the same with damage reduction from enemies that are poisoned. Damage reduction, like just the, the raw damage reduction. You can have life. You can have damage reduction while fortified on other classes. So these are actually the stats that are more useful than resistance could ever be. So resistances can be useful under very specific circumstances if you want to optimize your character for one specific activity or for one specific boss fight or something like that. But right now we don't have anything like that in the game. But let's say for example Ashava becomes an uber boss and Ashava does almost entirely physical and poison damage and no other elements. In that case it might be worth stacking poison resistance on your items. But this is like the only extreme scenario where that would make any kind of sense. And what this also means is that diamonds in a jewelry are absolutely worthless. You always want to have skull on basically any single build you want to have skulls. Even on builds where you run disobedience and you're kind of overcapping very easily with your armor. The armor caps out at 85% damage reduction. So right now my armor values are relatively low because of a bunch of like not very high item power pieces. And the item power dictates how much base armor each of those pieces has. So for example, here I have 668. If this was like 800 boots, I would have like another 50, 60 armor. Same here and same here, etc. So my items are a bit low, but even so with a stack disobedience, I can reach near 85% damage reduction against monsters of my level. If I had a bit better rolls or maybe a few extra armor nodes on Paragon, I could easily reach the armor cap. On the tooltip, it can go over 85%, that's a bug. So don't be fooled by that, you can't get 100% damage reduction. 85% of armor is the cap. But back to the item rolls, a chest piece like this is almost the best in slot of any kind of item I could wear. I have the raw damage reduction that applies to everything. This is very powerful. Then I have the close enemies, which is the most powerful one for a melee build. And I'm mostly in melee range. I have the poison reduction as well. So similarly, this could be like damage reduction from burning enemies, damage reduction for a while fortified. So on other classes, you might swap that around. But essentially, I have the top four stats with pretty high rolls here on a stat piece. So this is like GG. And the same applies to the pants. You can actually roll exactly the same stuff. And you see here 23.7% damage reduction from close enemies. That stat alone is literally a legendary aspect. One stat. And again, I have the damage reduction for everything. I have the damage reduction from distance. I have some life. And there could be, again, like, for example, total armor is not terrible. So especially when you are uh, not running disobedience, you can run percent total armor, or you can have all these other damage reduction stats. There are also damage stats on these pieces, especially in a chest. You can have like physical damage, cold damage, fire damage. Forget about all of that. It's all absolute worthless. It's all bait because those damage stats nearly do nothing for your damage, and they definitely don't help you to survive. Well, you can have literally like two, three, four like legendary aspects in just stats. 
on your chest piece alone and the same for the pants. And even on your ammo you can stack some of these. You see here, I have another 23% damage reduction from close enemies. So your chest piece and your pants need to be on point if you want to survive. You're looking for exactly those uh, stats. You're not looking for any kind of damage stats. You want to have defenses only and life as well. Speaking about life rolls, there are five slots where you can roll life. So number one is the helm. Then you have the chest, the pants, and your two rings. So these are the only slots that can roll maximum life. And maximum life is extremely powerful as well. So on your headpiece, there's usually no negotiation. There's not really any like, yeah, crazy stats you can roll besides life and cooldown. So you always go for that here. And then on the chest piece or on the pants, you could argue under certain circumstances. If you have like, let's say, another like 15% damage reduction roll instead of this life, that will be okay. But generally, you want to stack life wherever possible, especially on the helm and especially on the rings, in my opinion. So rings are usually crit, crit, life, plus one extra stat, like either vulnerable damage or resource generation. So these are usually like the typical rings if you want to have like a GG one. But uh, yeah, on the helm, it's non-negotiable. And you see here right now, I have 9,500 life with my rogue. If I take off my maximum life gear, this will go down to like half that or so, 5.5k. So with just those five item rolls, and they're not even like fully maxed out here, I have 800... I have 800 again, I have 700, 600, and 1000. So this is a pretty solid roll, but all the others are not even anywhere near max. So I could have more than double my life by just having those five life rolls here. And another thing to know about life is that the percent maximum life rolls or rubies or stuff from paragons that gives you extra maximum life. For example, down here on the starting board, you always have this maximum life here. This actually does not multiply your life bonuses from your gear. So the flat extra bonuses are only flat bonuses. They don't get another bonus. What this means is that it makes rubies generally extremely weak and you want to focus more on the damage reduction gems in your gear. So for example, any kind of fortified class runs sapphires. You get 3% damage reduction while fortified up to five times. That's pretty sick. Or you run tobuses, especially if you don't have a good source or a very reliable source of unstoppable in your build. Topuses give you 10% damage reduction while control impaired. So you can stack five of these and they multiply with each other. You get roughly 40% damage reduction while crowd controlled. And there are a lot of crowd controls in the game, especially on hardcore. This is extremely useful to have because, well, being crowd controlled is the number one source of deaths apart from disconnect. So rubies, especially with a bit of maximum life rolls on your gear, are an absolute bait. Forget about those. Sapphires are fine on fortified classes, and otherwise it's topaz all the way, basically. On every single build, I just slot topazes because they're so powerful. And the thing about topazes is they also work for soft crowd controls. So when you get slowed by flies, or you get chilled by some cold elite or something like that, you actually have this damage reduction applied to you, even if you're not stunned or uh, knocked down or something like that. So it can also make you a lot more tanky in regular combat. One thing to note here is the temerity pants. I keep getting a lot of questions about this item in particular. This can give you a barrier when you overheal over your maximum life. And people ask me, isn't that a good choice? And the answer is hell no. You can maybe kind of use that for like the mid game. You know, if you find it level 60, you can use it to like maybe 80 or something like that. But the problem with these pants is they have atrocious stats effectively none of the stats that you want on your pants that can give you, you know, more than double the, the effective HP. And all they do is give you this barrier. But you also lose a legendary aspect on top of that. So first of all, to even use the Merity Pants, you need to have ridiculous healing in your build so that you constantly refresh this barrier to maximum. And then as you scale to higher levels, as you find better gear and you have more maximum life on your items and more maximum life percent on your Paragons, for example, this barrier does not actually increase. The barrier only scales with the base life. And at level 100, you're gonna have, I don't know, something like 7K base life or so. You get 80% of that as a barrier, which is like 5K barrier or so. But a really min-max character with good life rolls, a bit of a percent life on your gear, you can have like 15,000 life or so. And only one third of that will be barrier in the end. So Temerity is a kind of useful item for builds that run very little life bonuses, and have a lot of healing and are far away from level 100. After you max out your character, you definitely don't want to use those pants anymore, unless they have a very good reason to do so. So if you follow all these points and you have similar items to me, you will probably survive a lot better already than you ever did. 
But then, of course, you can also specialize your character a little bit for some extra defenses. So especially with me playing on Hardcore, I like to build my characters a bit tanky so I don't die. So for example, there are damage reduction passes on your skill tree. You can go for something like Sturdy on the Rogue, or Barbs have elite damage reduction or extra maximum life, or Druids have extra res or damage reduction after using the defensive skill. So these kind of passes can really help you out to give you like even more damage reduction. They are effectively similar to one of those item rolls. And you can also have sustain. So for example, on the Rogue, you have siphoning strikes. On the Druid, you can heal with uh, nature skills. On the Barb, you can heal when you spend Fury. So it's not just about taking less damage, but it's also about healing. And some of those choices can be extremely powerful here. So something like Sturdy and Siphoning Strikes basically goes into every single Rogue build for me. And lastly, also don't want to neglect Crowd Controls. Crowd Controls are very powerful in Diablo 4 because most fights are extremely fast-paced and, and short. So a Crowd Control that only lasts like 2-3 seconds will usually be enough to actually just disable a pack until they're dead. So you want to include some kind of Crowd Controls most of the time. As a Rogue, this is very easy, but other classes also have the opportunity to do so. But just as an example, I run in, I throw down my Poison Trap, it gives me 1.6 seconds knockdown, and well, in those 1.6 seconds, I usually just kill everything. And anything that doesn't die will be poisoned, so I have less damage taken from the poisoned enemies. You can do stuff like debilitating toxins, they deal even less damage then. So you can always like swap around your setup a little bit to include maybe some more crowd controls, to include some of those defensive choices. And that also pretty much concludes the basics of how you want to build a character defensively so that you can survive, so that you can go to level 100 easily, so that you can survive maybe even higher Nightmare Dungeons. So focus on those defensive stats, especially on chest and pants. Focus on defensive aspects, especially disobedience, and have those toe buzzers in your gear if you don't need to run another gem, for example, sapphires. And finally, forget about resistances. They are pretty much worthless. And then, of course, there's still a gameplay component, so you have to outplay certain enemies sometimes. You know, some attacks can crowd control you, certain attacks do a lot of damage, for example, the Goldman Shamans with the lightning, or the Molten Explosions. Like, you're obviously just not supposed to face tank these kind of things. So, nothing can prevent you from dying there. But I hope this video helps you. Stay tuned for more uploads, and see you guys next time.